In this video, I'm gonna show you how to book more appointments as an insurance agent and why you might have trouble booking them now. This video is sponsored by none other than Lead Heroes, you guys. Lead Heroes has got you covered when it comes to telemarketed leads and virtual staffing. On the lead side, whether it be Medicare supplement leads, final expense leads, turning 65 leads, they just got something for everybody. They can also actually have you plug in with one of their virtual staff members on the staffing side to where you can pay by the hour for one of their trained and very well vetted staff members to help you out in your business in a virtual assistant format. Just because you watch this video, they're going to give you 10% off any order you make on their website. Link to the site can be found down in the description, so go ahead and check them out. I talk to insurance agents all the time that have trouble with two things, booking appointments and calling leads, and they kind of go hand in hand, my friends. So in this video today, I'm going to talk to you exactly how I would recommend to book appointments and some tips that I can share with you, some tips and some tricks of the trade. When you're calling for appointments, there's a couple of things that I think are gonna really maximize your efforts. As far as what you actually say, the terminology that you use, the options that you give for people, and how far out you're scheduling the appointment. The first tip I'm gonna give you in this video today is never book an appointment more than a couple of days out if you can help it, and here's why. In our fast-paced society today, people have very low attention spans. People have very short-term memories today. Are, and I think this is worse than it's ever been. This has always been the case, but I think this is worse than it's ever been. What happens when you book your appointments too far out is you increase the chance that someone's going to stand you up. This has been proven time and time again. So do yourself a favor. Don't schedule your appointment too far out if you can help it. Try to schedule it a day later or two or three days later, later on in the same week, definitely in the same calendar week if you can help it. This is going to increase your effectiveness by a long shot. Another thing that you want to make sure that you're paying attention to when it comes to scheduling appointments is if your intention of making a call, making a sales call, is actually to schedule an appointment and then get off of the phone, get out of your own way and shut the hell up. Stop talking so much. Stop asking them how their day is. You need to get quick and straight to the point. This is going to be vital because you want to get that appointment done as fast as possible. You want to get that, that phone call to schedule your appointment done as fast as possible. There'll be plenty of, plenty of time for pleasantries when the actual appointment happens. But if you actually stay on the phone too long, I've seen plenty of insurance agents and salespeople do this in my career. They actually end up having the opportunity to schedule the appointment. The person is open to it, but they end up talking themselves out of it and the person's like, ah, oh, on second thought, you know, every second you spend on that phone with that person, if, you're, if your goal is to schedule an appointment, is going to be to your detriment. So try to get off the phone faster, get to the point, cut out some of the chit chat as quickly as possible, and then get off the phone. Another thing that I think that salespeople do wrong, and this comes from personal experience, you guys got to remember, I ca called every lead under the sun for years and years and years, and I even spent the first three to four years of my career cold calling for appointments, right? So this was the toughest call that you will ever make in making a cold call to someone that does not know who you are and they're essentially a name on a piece of paper, right? Essentially all leads are a name on a piece of paper, but the name on the piece of paper for a lead is someone that expressed vague interest. A cold call is someone that has no idea who you are, never expressed any interest whatsoever. So one thing that I found successful for me that I think goes against a lot of very um, you know, sound minds in terms of the sales process is when you are giving them options, when you're actually booking the appointment. So many people go into the appointment and they say, hey, Mr. Johnson, I am going to be out in your area. I'm going to get back into that in a second. I'm going to be out in your area next Thursday at 2 o'clock, and that's the only time I have available. Does that work for you? Well, what do you do if he's not available at 2 o'clock? on Thursday, right? That's just the dumb way to go about it. You're pigeonholing yourself into a corner and it's that old school sales psychology tactic that's just bullshit and it doesn't work anymore. Never, and it probably never worked that well to start with. I mean, you might get lucky and your schedules might align, but 
I see too often salespeople making calls, trying to book appointments, and they got nothing to do in their calendar, and they're only giving somebody one option or two options. It's just a bad way to book an appointment, in my opinion. So this is the way that I would do it. I would call up. When I'm talking to Mr. Johnson and I'm actually scheduling the appointment, I'd say, Mr. Johnson, I'm going to be out in your area later on this week. And this is a big, big, powerful thing. It's a no big deal clause. I'm saying, listen, Mr. Johnson, I'm going to be out in your area anyway. It's no trouble. It's it's very convenient for me to stop by while I'm out that way. It's no trouble. It's no big deal. I'm not going out of my way anyway. Might as well stop by while I'm in the area and we can take advantage of that opportunity, right? So no big deal. I'm going to be out in your area. So Mr. Johnson, I'm going to be out in your area later on this week. Um, do you have any time later on this week while I might be out there that is convenient for you? Maybe I could come by for about 30 to 45 minutes. No cost, no obligation, but at the very least, I think I could point you in the right direction. So that's powerful, right? I'm not pigeonholing myself into any particular days. So a lot of times if someone's interested in an appointment, they're going to say, well, what days are you going to be out here? I'm going to say, well, it's funny that you ask. I'm actually going to be out there a couple of days, um, particularly Thursday and Friday. Do either one of those days work well with your schedule? So I'm giving it a very wide gap, right? And he's going to say, well, uh, Thursday is actually probably better than Friday. See, if I just told him Friday at 2, I would have lost my opportunity on the appointment because what happens? He says, I'm not available Friday at 2. I say, well, actually, Mr. Johnson, I'm available Thursday too. Then... I'm building seeds of distrust in the minds of the prospect. I've already lied to him and he's caught me in a lie, right? So you don't want to do that. What you want to do is you want to work through that this with them and walk them along the line of them telling you what's the best time for them without you telling them that you got nothing going on in your appoint in your calendar and your calendar's wide open, right? There's a there's a very simple trick to doing it this way. So he's going to say Thursday is better for him. I'm going to say perfect. Is morning or afternoon better for you? And he's going to say, uh, he, which one's better for you? I'm going to say, well, I have um, some openings both times, but I also have some meetings both times. So it just depends on the specific time. Is there a specific time that probably would be the most convenient for you? See what I did there? I'm being very vague about it, but I'm also explaining to him, hey, I'm busy. I've got stuff to do, but I do have some openings either time, so I'm flexible, right? So he's going to say, well, actually, morning's better for me. I'm going to say, perfect. Um, how does 10 o'clock sound? 10 o'clock works. See, what I did was I, there's, there, there's two, there's two trains of thoughts with this, right? The idea and the concept of trying to pigeonhole people into a couple of times. And this is what salespeople and sales trainers will tell you all the time is that you want people to perceive you as busy, right? And that is true, but there's a way to do that without screwing yourself and, and losing all the potential trust you have on that phone call. And also, pigeonholing yourself and maybe having to schedule the appointment out. You wouldn't believe how often I tried that as a salesperson early on in my career. And someone would say, well, I'm not available that time. And then we had to schedule out a week or two or two weeks out because I didn't want to admit that I was lying, right? This, this tactic has made me hundreds of thousands of dollars making appointments and making sales as a sales agent. So this is going to help you out a lot. But there, th this is essentially a meeting in the middle, right? It's, 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 it's being more reasonable about it. And I'm getting the person to book an appointment with me that's the best time for them without telling them that I could pretty much do any time, right? If I'm a new salesperson, I'm struggling to get appointments. Maybe I don't have a lot of appointments in my calendar. This is the method and the way that you guys want to go about this. So to refresh, you want to make sure that you say, I'm going to be out in your area, Mr. Johnson, later on this week. Is there any particular time that would be good for maybe that I could stop by for 30 to 45 minutes and we could kind of hash this out and we could kind of have a conversation? Well, what day? Um, well, I'm going to be out there a couple of days, actually. It just depends on the day in terms of the time that I'm available. Well, uh, Thursday is good for me. Perfect. Would morning or afternoon work? Well, uh, what time is better for you? Well, it, it just really depends on um, the, the, if it's morning or afternoon, Mr. Johnson. I, I have some availability either time. It just depends on the time. Is there a particular time that's, that's most convenient for you? And I'll see if that works for me. Well, maybe 10 o'clock. 10 o'clock is actually the best time. And it, it, it's, it's funny you say that because that's probably the best time I have right now in my calendar. Let me confirm your address, Mr. Johnson. That's another thing you always want to do. Confirm the address. Confirm the appointment. Send a text message confirming your name and the appointment. And this is going to help you with your appointments. And it's going to help you book more. It's going to help you 
have more show up and have less cancel on you. There's plenty of other things we could talk about in this video today for just for the sake of time. I'm going to leave you with just these few tips. If you enjoyed this video and you want to see more like it, let me know about it by smashing the like button up for the YouTube algorithm. That helps me know that you want to see more content like this and I'll be happy to do plenty more. Make sure to comment down below. What are your thoughts on my strategy? Do you have a different line of thought? Have you tried these other tactics and they haven't worked before? I'd love to have a dialogue with you. Hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell so you're notified when we upload it. Until next time, guys, thanks so much for watching. Here's to your success and your abundance. Thanks, guys.